Six months ago, on the 23rd of February 2023, a 41-year-old woman named Rebecca Bleefnik, seen here, was brutally murdered or even executed at this property in Quincy, Illinois. Spending her final few minutes of existence in fear, pain and terror, as she lay on the cold grey tiles of her own bathroom floor, where her life unfortunately expired. At the time of the murder, Rebecca, who was known as Becky, was going through a bitter divorce battle with this man, Timothy Bleefnik. Between them, they had three boys, aged 6, 10 and 12. Outwardly, for the first few years of their marriage, they appeared to be very much in love and prioritised their children's upbringing. On Becky's Facebook page, family and friends made plenty of comments regarding the family of five, referring to them as the handsome crew, the super cute household, and some regarded them as their favourite family. However, not all was well beneath the surface. Three years before Becky's untimely demise, Timothy made headlines in his hometown of Quincy when appearing on an episode of Family Feud, an American game show with his two brothers and parents. The host, Steve Harvey, asked him a question, and the joke-like response from this well-dressed, smiling man created a clear reaction from the audience. People, what's the biggest mistake you made at your wedding? Honey, I love you, but said I do. Oh. <laughs> Not my mistake. Not my mistake. I love my wife. A year after appearing on the show, the Bleefnicks entered a new phase of life, a highly stressful one, as they engaged in divorce proceedings that were still ongoing at the time of Becky's death. Understandably, he soon fell under the spotlight again, but this time the headlines were completely different. He was no longer that happy-faced game show contestant who bounced in front of the TV cameras answering questions to entertain the viewing public. Instead, he was expected to answer a series of questions designed to ascertain if he was involved in his estranged wife's cruel and sinister murder. And it was cruel, because it soon transpired he planned it. Going as far as doing several practice runs to a home leading up to the murder, as they lived separately at the time, about a mile apart from each other. The perpetrator also made sinister Google searches like how to force open a window or a door with a crowbar. He queried whether it was possible to wash off gunpowder residue. And he also researched how to make a homemade silencer. These gruesome facts were discovered after a search warrant was issued on his home in early March, where authorities alarmingly found more circumstantial evidence of this unthinkable crime, resulting in his arrest. After breaking into his estranged wife's home, entering a window he prized open with a crowbar, he then chased his terrified victim, Becky, who he knew was home alone that night around the property, where he repeatedly shot her to death 14 times, using a homemade silencer attached to the gun. It was an execution. The horrifying event coincided with their contentious divorce, which had dragged on for two years, since they couldn't agree terms. Early in 2023, Becky rejected Tim's proposal to finalise a divorce under conditions that included 60% of parenting time in his favour, with no child support and decreased maintenance payments. The battle was bitter and continued. Leading up to the tragic night in February, Becky, who worked as a nurse, predicted something terrible was going to happen to her, especially as she described Tim as being erratic, vengeful and unpredictable. She spoke about this to several people, and one of them was a sister, Sarah, who shared it in court. This is a text that Becky sent to myself and my husband, Brett, regarding fear for her life. If something ever happens to me, please make sure the number one person of interest is Tim, as that is who would do something. Becky's worst fear actually materialised. Fortunately, the investigation was swift. It didn't take long to find and punish the man who executed her. Over the course of Tim's six-day trial back in May, close to 50 people testified alongside the presentation of 200 pieces of evidence. 
and this led to the jury finding him guilty for the unforgivable crimes. Then just last week on Friday the 11th of August, he received his sentence. Mr. Bleifnick, you researched this murder, you planned this murder, you practiced this murder, you broke into her house, and you shot her. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen times. I don't know how long it took you to do that. Some of those shots were fired while she was lying on the ground. And you did all of that while your children was up, were upstairs at your house, lying snug in their beds. The court believes that the appropriate sentence for each of the two counts of first degree murder would be natural life in prison. The court believes that the third count of home invasion, appropriate sentence is life in prison. Those three sentences will merge together into one life sentence. And then Mr. Bleifnick, I need to give you your appeal. And the judgment of being sentenced to natural life in prison is the equivalent of life without parole, which in my opinion is probably the most fitting outcome considering he planned the execution of that poor woman who leaves behind three young boys. He has 30 days from the day he was sentenced to make an appeal.